Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'd like to talk to you guys about timeline management inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. So in the edit tab you have the timeline. By default it's going to be kind of towards the bottom of the screen. You might have a side panel up here, but the timeline will be always be down here. And inside the timeline you have both video tracks. You can see them numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, as many as you need, usually just one or two. And then in the audio tracks you have audio 1, audio 2, audio 3. New to DaVinci Resolve 15 though is the ability to add in subtitle tracks. So if I want, I can right click here, add a new subtitle track, which will go above the video tracks. And then I can right click in there to add a subtitle, which I have another video on the subject, um, but I'm not going to be covering that much in this video. So check that one out if you need more details on subtitles. Now in terms of organizing your video clips or your titles inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. You should have your main clip on the bottom because the because whichever clip is lowest is going to be considered the background clip, which means everything else is going to show in front, which means things like titles will have transparency, so they will allow other layers like the background uh, video to actually persist. So if you have your uh, title on video 2 and then your video clip on video 1 here You'll be able to get the desired result But if I put this video clip on video 3 it would cover the title completely and you wouldn't be able to see it Now uh, wherever you see these little semi-transparent white boxes those are transitions uh, You can access transitions by going over to the effects library So that's in the top left and then you can choose video transitions. Uh, there's also a lot of new effects that they've added in DaVinci Resolve 15, particularly audio effects, which can be applied directly onto audio tracks down here. Um, so generally what I will do is whatever. Now, as far as audio tracks are concerned, you can organize them in any order and it won't really make much of a difference. But uh, whatever you put on a single audio track can be managed collectively through the audio mixer, which is in the top right. So if I say lower the decibels on audio track two, that's going to be lowering down all of the audio on this track simultaneously, which can be pretty useful if you have, let's say, multiple music tracks as I do in this video. Um, you'll also notice that there are controls such as M for muting a track if you want it to temporarily not be played or you actually don't want it to be in the final video output at all. Uh, the first one is for selection mode. So that's enabled by default and it allows you to say drag some of your video clips around by just left clicking and dragging them. It's kind of standard functionality if you were to compare it to something like Windows File Explorer. So that should give you a good reference point. And then next is trim edit mode. Depending on where you click with this tool, it's going to give you different functionality. So if I click just on the inside of the right edge and I drag it to the right, you're going to see that everything on the right of that in the video deck is going to be pulled over as we actually shrink that title clip. But if we click on the left hand side of the clip, and we drag it, then what you'll notice is that the length of the clip doesn't actually change, but the position of everything past it does. So if you wanted to say, kind of adjust your entire timeline simultaneously, uh, that would be one way you could do it. But also if you click on the intersection of a video clip, then you won't change the length of the video, but you'll change which pieces from your source material will actually be uh, used here. So if you need to say offset your video by a few frames or a few seconds, this is a pretty good way to do it without actually changing the length of your clip or upsetting your timeline. Now the next tool is one of the most commonly used tools, the Razor Edit Mode. Uh, whenever you want to make cuts in your video and split one clip into two or more clips, this is the tool you use to do that. So if I come down here and I left click inside of this clip, Right where I clicked, it's now been separated into two separate video clips. Now note that any changes you've made to properties such as zoom over here in the inspector are actually going to remain exactly as they were before the clip was cut. So if you wanted to reset a clip to default, this wouldn't be an ideal way to do it and it probably would be easier to just bring the clip in again from the uh, media pool. Uh, but just keep in mind that it's going to maintain its properties. So if you had it zoomed in really far and then in the second clip, originally one clip, uh, you wanted to lower its zoom again, you'd have to drop it back down. 
The next three options allow you to control how a clip is inserted into the timeline. With insert clip, you're inserting whatever selection you have from your media pool. So I could go grab something from the media pool here. And let's just grab that. So I have in out point set, which you can control with in out. And wherever you have your timeline cursor set, if you hit insert clip, it's going to push whatever's in front of it forward and insert it right in there without overwriting anything. Uh, if you do overwrite clip, then it's going to add it into the timeline with the amount of time that you have set in the media pool and anything that's in front of it on that track, it's just going to go ahead and overwrite, as you can see there. So next is replace clip. As long as you don't have in out point set, which you can clear by going up to mark and then clear in out or hitting alt X on the keyboard, uh, you can left click on a video clip and whatever you have selected in your media pool uh, preview window, it's going to replace this clip with the same duration. So I hit replace clip and whatever clip I had in the timeline before is now replaced with the same duration uh, as whatever I had over here from the media pool. Uh, there's some extra useful settings like snapping here. So if you want um, like moving the cursor to automatically snap to something like in between two clips, which is very useful, you should have snapping enabled. It makes it a lot easier to get those pinpoint uh, selections on the timeline. If you don't want to move anything on your timeline by accident, you can use the position lock over here. And you can also uh, use flags and markers on clips in order to set them for different purposes. Uh, but when you do set these markers, they don't really have any necessary meaning. It really depends on you and the people you're working with, uh, like what color actually means what. The flags will show up on your video clips wherever you have them set. And the markers uh, will be indicated in your video clip. Uh, on the frame where you actually have it set. So here you can see marker one and the time that it's set at. So moving on from there, just a few more things. You might notice that on my timeline right now, they have a series of thumbnails being taken from the video clips themselves. Uh, that is sometimes a very helpful thing to have, but if you want to turn that off, there's actually timeline view options here. So you can turn it from multiple uh, thumbnails over to a single thumbnail at the beginning and end of each clip, or you can have no thumbnails set if you need it to be a very minimalist view on your video. Uh, beyond that, you can enable audio waveforms, very useful for actually editing your audio clips to know when you're speaking and when you're not. And you can show and hide subtitle tracks from your timeline. And there's also a scrollable bar here to control the height of your video and audio tracks as you desire. Now this changes them all at once. You can also control them manually uh, by going in between each audio or video track and dragging up and down, left click and hold. And while you're editing, if you ever want to mute or increase or decrease the volume, you have volume controls over here. So that's pretty much going to be a basic overview of the timeline inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. So I hope this helped you guys out to learn a couple new things. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.